Now, do you wanna use cameras like the Red Komodo on your next shoot, but you don't wanna spend Red Komodo money, then you should probably consider renting out camera gear. What's going on guys, Kofi Bo, and today we're gonna to be talking about renting camera equipment. This is a great way that you can get high quality equipment for your next video shoot without having to spend high quality prices. Now in today's video, I'm gonna give you five different tips in terms of renting your camera out the right way and how to make the most out of that experience. Number one, get insured, get covered. A lot of rental houses with the higher quality cameras like a Red Komodo or a Sony FX6 or even above are going to require you to have renter's insurance. Now for renter insurance, you wanna pay for a plan that's going to cover the gross amount of the camera gear that you're going to be renting. Now, I'm from Canada, so I use front row insurance to cover myself when I'm renting out camera gear, but check your region and check what insurance companies work the best for you and where you are. Next thing, and this is kind of a hack, but book on weekends. Now, a lot of rental shops aren't open on the weekend, so if you get a Friday rental, you don't have to return it until Monday, which means that you have extra days with the camera for the price of only renting for one day. If you're somebody that likes to try before you buy or somebody that wants to build a portfolio with a certain look, renting cameras on weekends especially when you want to take a break from your nine to five is a great way to do that. So what you want to do is if you do have this camera over the course of a weekend is start lining up batch shoots for that weekend. That way you get as much footage and as much experience with the camera as possible in a low pressure environment before you bring it to your next client shoot. And the next thing is renting it out for spec projects. So if you do have projects in mind, but you want to shoot it on a particular camera kit, then you actually can rent that out for those projects to make it look as good as possible. And next is actually putting that rental fee onto your quotes for your next video project. So sometimes clients want a higher quality look or sometimes they want a certain camera when you're shooting their videos for them and renting those things out because you don't own them is a great way to not only not have to pay out of pocket for the camera gear you're gonna be using, but if you do decide that you wanna own it, you can still charge for the camera gear that you're gonna be bringing to set. Clients for the most part are looking for a result. They don't really care if you've rented the equipment or it's something that you own, but if it's a means to an end and you have to pay something externally in order for you to get the thing that they want you to do, then you do have to go and charge that rental fee off to your client. So as you're building the portfolio, as you're building that experience with something like a higher end camera that you've rented out, the next gig that you have that requires that, just add that rental fee onto your quote, and that way you're not losing money by using equipment that you were asked to use in the first place. And number five is share your experience with others. There's different platforms like Instagram and TikTok and here on YouTube where people share their experiences with the technology and the camera equipment that they use on a daily basis. And that could be anything from something they purchased and they own and their love or something that they rented and had a good experience with. In fact, this red Komodo, it's not actually mine. It's actually a rental swap because my FX6 is on loan right now and the rental house that needed it offered me the red Komodo in exchange with a lens kit. So not only can I try it out and have an experience with it for the next month, but at the same time, my camera is off on a documentary set, making me money at the same time. Now, that's not to say that everybody should stop buying cameras and rent things out. There are some people that benefit from owning this high quality gear in their homes. Now, if you're somebody like you and I that's a solo operator, but you just want to have an experience with a different piece of kit, not only to get used to operating it, but also to share your experience with other people, then renting out camera gear is a great way to have the cake and eat it too. You can still use expensive cameras in your next shoot, but you don't necessarily have to front the giant price tag of the initial investment to have that camera in the first place. Now, I want to shout out Ibuki Rentals here in Toronto because they have given me the ability to rent out camera gears for different projects that I have. Now the Sony FX6 is my main camera, but they've been able to rent out different lenses and different camera bodies to me just so I can have experience with them or if I need them for a particular project. So if you guys are in the Toronto area, make sure to go and check these guys out. Now, there's so much camera gear that's out nowadays and as somebody that's made those purchases, made those returns, had those experiences, what I've come to conclude is that you just need a basic camera kit for your everyday use and for anything else, for any specialty items, you could always contact your local rental shop, borrow it, have that experience, and you can get into your next shoot with something a little bit different. Now, I hope that answers the question as why I've gone from the FX6 to the Red Komodo. It's not a permanent change. It's just a camera I've rented out while my other one is on loan, and I still have to pay my bills and I still have to do client projects. So using something like this has helped me out a lot to bridge that gap, especially when I don't have my main camera. And I hope all you Red and Sony fans can calm down now because it's not that serious.